The first launch of the Space Shuttle occurred on April the 12th, 1981, when Columbia, with two crew members, astronauts Commander John Young and pilot Robert Crippen, lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center. Photographers, film and television crew and journalists swarmed to witness the historic event. About 600,000 spectators from both the states and overseas flocked to the coastal area to watch the liftoff. If it was successful, the shuttle project would be the backbone of the USA's space program and bring forward projects such as the International Space Station. It was exactly 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and the liftoff would mark another great milestone in space research and technology. The world held its breath when the shuttle rose on its column of exhaust. The solid rocket boosters contained the solid fuel that provides about 71% of the vehicle's liftoff thrust. They were jettisoned two minutes after launch at a height of 36 nautical miles. They deployed parachutes and landed in the ocean to be recovered. Next, Columbia was prepared for MECO, or main engine cutoff. At this point, Columbia was in space and traveling at over 18,000 miles per hour. The external tank, which holds half a million gallons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, was released eight and a half minutes after launch at an altitude of 60 nautical miles. Once in orbit, the machine and the crew were put to the test. The first test, open the payload doors. A space radiator cooling system is exposed when the doors are opened and this provides the required cooling of the shuttle's electronics. A following test was conducted to check the flight control systems and control surfaces. The shuttle was one of the earliest craft to use a computerized fly-by-wire digital flight control system. While the astronauts were completing their objectives, NASA's Californian dry lakes were becoming a hive of activity as nearly half a million visitors rumbled into the base to view the spectacular scene of the first ever reusable winged spacecraft glide to touchdown. Back in space, the crew of Columbia prepared for re-entry. The vehicle began re-entry by firing the engines in the opposite direction to the orbital motion for about three minutes. This firing was done roughly halfway around the globe from its landing site. The shuttle did a number of arcs and altitude maneuvers to wash off its Mach 26 velocity. Columbia was first sighted by long-range cameras at about 100,000 feet over Anderson Peak in California. The shuttle has decelerated from 26 times the speed of sound to just 216 miles an hour. While it completed two roll reversals to wash off speed, the shuttle's exterior was subjected to 2,500 degrees of Fahrenheit. No test of this stress could be simulated on Earth, and the astronauts were relying on the accuracy of NASA's engineering calculations of this critical phase of the mission. Although the mission was highly successful, a worrying event did occur. While in space, the crew noticed some missing tiles and damage on an engine pod. Also, a little publicized detail about the first shuttle mission was that hot gas entered a wheel well on re-entry, which buckled the right main landing gear on touchdown. Were these the signs of things to come? Two shuttles have been lost, and their loss reminds us that space travel is still perilous. Yet our human sense of discovery drives us on to explore the unexplored. The first shuttle flight is testimony to this.